Welcome to the NHC GOP podcast. I'm Rule Sample. We are heading into the municipal elections of 2023 here in Wilmington, North Carolina, and I am happy to be joined by one of the candidates for city council, Neil Anderson. Neil, how are you tonight, sir? I'm great, Rule. I'm I'm doing my first podcast. Pretty pretty cool. Pretty excited. Well, we'll be gentle with you, sir. So it's nice to have you on board. And uh, we just want to get right into it and ask you, you're running again for council. Yes, sir. What is the top issue that you have on your heart? What are you really focusing on as you get into this election? Well, I think I... I, you know, I think you have to respond to the to the citizens and the voters first. And all I hear there is uh, not all I hear there, but what I hear there most is infrastructure, traffic. Those every time you we put out any kind of a, you know questionnaire poll it comes back on top. Um, so that that if, if it's on their mind, then it's all better be on my mind. So let's let's talk about infrastructure. It is at times just difficult to get around this this town college avenue is just a parking lot at times market street is a parking lot at times why is it so difficult for the city council to get things done on infrastructure around here well you know you know i'm i'll you know i'll i'll some i'll tell you this most folks do not under don't know and i honestly didn't know you know i i knew Oleander was Highway 74, but new <laughs> no, 17 was market. So I assume those two were state roads, but I didn't realize how many are state roads. So, you you know, college, Oleander, market, independence, Carolina Beach. Um, uh, I could go on. I mean, most of the, the roads that you drive on every day are state roads. So we're our hands are tied there. Um, in terms of we we do we do not maintain those roads. We can't fix a pothole. We can't we can't put a bus bench on the on the side of the road if we wanted to. We have to, all that is their well the bus bench will it's our responsibility. We got to get their permission. And it's anyway. So the long long the short of it is a state which is positive. It's a positive and a, and a negative. The positive is it's gotten they, their the way they choose projects has gotten away from or they've tried to get it away from just who's got the strongest you know, state senator. Um, that's the way it was here for a long time. Um, you can drive a four lane road to the Outer Banks and, you know, fall asleep at the wheel. So, I mean, they had a strong senator by night. So now they, it, it's by data. And that means it's going to be a trailing, you know, you've got to have a problem to get their attention. Mm-hmm. Uh, and for the longest time, the problems, intersections, if you will, were all in Raleigh and all in Ra- into Charlotte. I and mean, there are others, but for the most part in those areas and over ours has slowly bubbled to the top and we're, I'm, I serve on the MPO, which is the NCDOTs. MPO means metropolitan planning organizations. It's part of the, it's the extension of the NCDOT local representatives that are on there trying to push for projects. And we're now, you know, we have, we've had one intersection for roughly I, I, 40 years. Uh, I mean, sorry, one overpass. And we'll get a second one here next week when when it opens out at military and uh, market, and that's super exciting. But what's really exciting is we have seven more coming in the next ten years. Nice. Uh, you mentioned College Road being a parking lot. One of those is not just an overpass; it's Independent uh, Boulevard extension where it where it right now it 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 ends uh, at Coval Road over here. Um, That'll be four lane and go right over the top of Market Street and all the way on out to uh, to uh, Martin Luther King. So and then have an intersection there. So that gives us one of our big problems, according to transportation engineers, is we only have two true vertical uh, routes out of town. You got Carolina Beach and College, and Carolina Beach uh, is not used nearly as much. So having that third one keeps you from having that stair step, lots of left turns to get to 40. Uh, so that that's just going to be huge. That's going to be a lot of pain in between now and then. A lot of barrels, a lot of going to be, some people might be using choice words at times. <laughs> but, but, but at the end. End of the day, you, have, you, you know, the inter- intersection at Eastwood and um, Eastwood and military will be continuous flow. You won't stop. 
Nice. So it's it's exciting, but it's you know ten years or ten years. I, I mean, I, until I got in government, I didn't know how things slow things move. But but they're they're huge projects. You know, I can see I've seen people build a house for a you know year and a half, and, and these are going to be massive, multi you know thirty forty million dollar projects. So we're we're on the radar. Help is coming. Um, won't be here tomorrow. But uh, the good news is it's it's a lot of times these things get planned but don't get budgeted. These are budgeted and, and the money's allotted. So they're, they're budgeted, they're, planned, and in the works. Ten years. All we have to do is just and and, and just oh. hang in there. Just well, there'll be some finish along the way, but uh, nevertheless, there will be. I'm sure there'll be some that don't get finished when they uh, say they will be either. <laughs> but the, it, it's an it's an interesting problem to have because more and more people are discovering our fair city here in Wilmington. We have been discovered. That's a great word. I, I say I use that one often. I, I mean, I forty started it, but it's just when it was finished. But it's just gotten more and more. I, I will touch back on infrastructure. I'm not shirking the, the idea that the city does not have infrastructure to look after. We do um, storm water, our collector streets, our neighborhood streets, um, all those. We had a in 2018. We we had that massive uh, hurricane that I think we had 120 inches of rain that year, or something like that. So, uh, if you can imagine, you know, all the the older infrastructure and pipes we have, they got really taxed. Then we had all those trucks. We have we have all these hurricanes. When we've had hurricanes, all those big trucks riding around on neighborhood streets hauling, you know, ton, you know, tens of tons of lumber in and out of there, mm-hmm. you know, trees really wars out the streets. So we've, we've got, we know we have work to do there. We're paving 20 to 25 miles lane miles, which is half the, that's one side of a street a year, the last five years. So we're working hard on that. We've got several um, uh, big stormwater projects. Uh, Clear run branch is the biggest one we've ever done. We, we just finished that. We're in the final stages of that. That's a, area over to the between you know i guess over near you uh <laughs> over in the college acres kind of area and so that's that's exciting and the flooding that people some people are familiar with near the college behind best buy that's i mean there's a lot of flooding in there it's just one that's a spot where P, uh, new center drive where people know about it and uh, yeah. so we, we're working on infrastructure all the time uh, i think of one thing that i'm just uh, I'm, I'm not. A sh- I'm disappointed in is we have not finished our uh, we have a, trans- a transportation bond that we that was passed by the citizens. I believe it was 2015. I might miss the year, but right around there. And now, we are. What was that about? No, we're still working on that. Um, well, that was it. Was it was tra- There was a lot of uh, trails. There were sh- some di- uh, sidewalks, uh, uh, intersections primarily. Um, mm-hmm like roundabouts, intersections, and each of them, and we finished a lot of them, but you, there's some, you know, COVID came along, mm. pandemic was kind of a problem. And our the biggest problem though has been, you know, our, we, our economy has been so booming. We put out bids and nobody even bid on it. I mean, the contractors are like, I, that's too complicated. I like this job over here and make more money is easier. And then we'd have to put it back out and we'd have to take, three little projects and put them together to make it important enough for somebody to bid on it. Um, so we still have, it's really, I'm on a committee with the mayor and councilman Robin Bart, and we're basically just got a whip out. I mean, all we do is meet every quarter trying to, what can we do to get this thing going? And it also like, there's a, a, a we're doing a, a a trail that runs from, from college there, at, uh, college road to Holly tree, Holly tree, runs up all the way around Greenville Loop and all the way up to uh market, not market, Oleander, sorry. Right. And I mean, you got to, the issue there is every single lot we go across usually needs an easement, even if it's not an easement for permanent, just easement for construction. So that, I don't know how many houses the, or property owners is, but it is, it's been a tall task. I think in the end, we just, we bid off more. It was a 50 some million dollar, uh, bond at the time, and a lot of those projects have run over with the, you know, with the inflation we've had. But um, if we do it again, if I'm around, I promise you, we're gonna we're gonna take a smaller bite that we can manage. And it's get always tough. It's, it's, 
it's always tough balancing property rights with the needs of the community and and everything else. And then I think you folks are doing it really well. But to go to to sort of wrap all this stuff up okay. is that you folks are you folks are are just as upset with the infrastructure. I mean, it's not like you folks get get. Uh, special treatment on the roads. They don't close the roads when you go down to to your work or your city council. You're sitting there in traffic as well. Oh, I, I well, sometimes. I mean, I I cuss a pothole too. I mean, I, I, <laughs> I, I it's and it's sometimes I scratch my head, but I, I do know we've also had a, a trouble with that. I mean, we we added we we were so tired of it. We added a whole nother asphalt crew to our staff, hmm. but manning it. Yeah. You know, we're at a three percent unemployment rate. So finding people to to work in those kind of jobs has been really very difficult. And then as soon as you get them, they find out, oh, I can, you know, the un, the the unemployment situation is such that, oh, I don't feel like coming today. If they get fired, they go get a job somewhere else immediately. Yeah. It's, it's just a, it's an unheard of situation. Normally, people value their their job, and it's just been kind of interesting to see. We we. Tree crews, any kind of. The other day, my um, recycle didn't get picked up, and I have the the um, uh, you know, the, I can call the guy in charge of it. You know, most people have to call the switchboard. But I say, what's going on? And and I I already knew the answer. I told him. I said, did you not have enough? It was it's either a truck down or a crew down. You know, we we picked up, and I so <laughs> that's that's been a challenge because we have the equipment. Watching it sit idle drives me crazy when. I'm driving through some of these potholes and streets in our neighborhoods. Well, let's talk about jobs a little bit more. As we were talking about things before the podcast, you were saying that one of the focuses that you're going to have, it's not necessarily a glamorous thing, but it's an essential thing, is middle class jobs and and getting and keeping those middle class jobs here in Wilmington. First off, what do you define as middle class jobs? Well, I'm probably antiquated on that because, you know, the, the number of, you know, what a true middle class income is, I probably could not define. But but I, I think of, you know, somewhere in that what we have tried to target is over 50000 under $100,000 a year. And I might, you know, from a census standpoint, they may not match up, but mm-hmm. uh, that's kind of but I think more than anything, it's a well above minimum wage job, well above, above, you know, well above $20 an hour, 25, you know, $20 an hour for someone who doesn't have necessarily, doesn't have any college, you know, and may not even necessarily have a high school diploma, yeah, but yet they're, they're hard workers and, and they're, you know, they're dependable, et cetera. I mean, just people trying to, to make a living for their family. Cause I think it's, it really becomes the root of a lot of the issues that if we stayed on here for a while, we would talk about, which would be, you know, crime, which would talk, you know, if you, if you don't have a, if your future is not, if you don't have, are excited about your future, or don't see you have a bright future, what are you going to do? You, you, yeah. you turn to the crime becomes, you know, something that you've, your, your mother's told you, you know, don't do this son, don't do this. Don't, and, but eventually, you know, you know, I, this guy's got a new, new, whatever I want one, you know, just slowly, but surely. So, and, I, and there, so that's a, um, that, that that's a root of the drug, the gang, all, a lot of stuff we could homelessness, you know, a lot of the things we could talk about, it wouldn't, I'm not saying we're not going to solve all that, but to get here in Wilmington, but I, if we just had more of those jobs, I think that would, it would go a long way to helping. And I'm also, you know, I think we're better set now than we've been in a long time to to attract that kind of employer um, because we've started, you know, they've we've, CFCC is a great uh, provides a great uh, you know funnel to that kind of thing because we started not we say we the school system mm-hmm. started a program with the junior and senior year. When my daughter graduated from Hanover, when she started at Hanover, they didn't, it was everything college track, basically. Maybe there was higher, you know, there was honors, but still at the base level, they were teaching just math and science and stuff like people going to college. And most of those folks were not. 
and now with the CTE education out at the out at uh, the out at the community college, you got linesmen, you got truck drivers. Huge shortage in both cases nationwide. Um, but culinary school, they've got um, you know all kinds of HVAC and stuff that, that there's a shortage of, and make great li- make a great living. Uh, and build, start your own business fairly easily, not huge capital in some of those cases, and and really grow it. So I think we're, but I'm I'm, de- I'm got tan- off on a tangent on on uh, the trades. But going back to the middle class jobs, we have training pro. We've had people come in, and the community college can set up training. We have um, we've now have over in the four twenty one highway four twenty one corridor across the river. It, you know, we started, I was on the um, utility authority, CFPUA, back in 2011, 2013, and we embarked on a uh, kind of a pipe dream at the time, and uh, no pun intended, but running water and sewer under the Cape Fear River over there because there was no water and sewer. And that would bring, you know, that was a whole, that was a uh, roadblock to, to mm-hmm. getting that kind of, getting industry, manufacturing, that kind of thing over there. And about that time, fortunately, they, they closed the coal the coal uh, plant and they've started natural gas. So now you have natural gas, water, and sewer. And we're starting to see the results over there. Um, just two, you know, two weeks ago, I was at a, a, a groundbreaking for, I think it's a Casa Bomber or Casa Bomber. They do, um, uh, you know, when you pull out all your little, like your trash can, all those little funky things that, hold it like you know, okay. sports systems and then they also do display systems for like uh cvs and people like that but i was kind of bummed i'm sitting there looking at this giant building and um it, it's a they're only going to end up employing 15 30 people wow. because it's a distribute you know it's the stuff's come in over it's it's a assembly and distribution and warehousing it's not manufacturing so now they're, they're great paying jobs or 15 we didn't have but uh it's you know, you're sitting there going god i thought when i th- he was going to say this is going to be a you know big employer it didn't work out that way the best one that's happened most recently was when um national gypsum reopened uh, they nice. closed uh, they closed in 2007 and um you know we had a little fight with some of the uh our new New citizens down in at, in the River Lights area. I wouldn't call it a fight. They were just they got some misinformation about formaldehyde and so forth. And I think we were able to to quell that, figure that all out, and and make them feel comfortable with it. But that 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 was I can't recall. I want to say seventy five, ninety jobs in that sixty thousand dollar average range. And if we can attract more of those, I just think it will help solve a lot of ills. Well, this uh, it kind of dovetails into infrastructure issues and other issues is that it's it's the trades that are going to help fix that it's it's I, I, my favorite one of my favorite quotes is from mike rowe you probably know who mike rowe is yeah. i just did a pod, did dirty, I just, dirty jobs or whatever did, he did dirty jobs i just did a podcast with the board of education because they are focusing on trades and oh, you know, mike rowe said you cannot digitize water you know, no. you will always need those trades that end up in the middle class, getting those things done. Plumbers, electricians, uh, construction workers, uh, th- those are the heart of our communities. And that's what you're trying to get back into into Wilmington. Well, I think it's it's become clear to me. I mean, we first moved here. Somebody said, here's here's an electric. Give me an electrician. I asked a neighbor and here's one. And watching now, 22 years later, it's got a he's got a booming business. I'm not sure he's middle <laughs> class anymore. I mean, uh, so it's, it's, it's just a, I think, um, uh, I don't think that has a, st- I think there was a stigma at some point, frankly, yeah. that yeah. You know, if you didn't go to college or this and that, and I just think there's just two paths and we were wasting, we were wasting a lot of uh, minds by, exactly. by not um, giving them, everybody's not going to be able to one, they're not the desire to go to college. They can't, in a lot of cases, afford it, or they don't want to borrow money. So why not be teaching them something that, you know, they where they can pot, come out of school and make a living, you know? So yeah. now at the, at the, there. wrapped up in all of this, we're mm-hmm. talking, we're talking government. And so government, in order to get things done with the government, 
is finances that that have to come from someplace and that's usually through taxes or one way or another but at one of the heart of your platforms is a, a, a financial conservatism why what does that mean to you why why do you call yourself a financial conservative I mean, I'll get to that. I would want to just hearing you kind of summarize some of what we talked about. I, I don't want uh, viewers, listeners to think that I believe that government creates jobs. I don't know. I don't, that's I, I'm, I'm just I don't even think that that's not a Republican uh, thought process for me. Yeah. I mean, we what we do or what I try to do in in everything I've done on council is try to create an environment that is, you know, pr good for business certainly and to uh, you know help anything that will help our local businesses grow small big me medium large whatever whether we can you know attract small businesses you know entrepreneurial type businesses that are just getting started all of all of the above how do we you know not have some you know regulate our way out of out of those getting those jobs and when I say that, I, I'm not saying that I don't value clean water and cleaner. I'm there, but there are we can get off the rails there too. I mean, I, I gave you a quick example. Uh, I got started getting calls from all these dock builders. We talk about trades, and they're going, "What have you all done?" And I'm like, "I don't. What do we do?" And the we this the CAMA, which is the state organization which monitors our waters and our waterways, has regulations for docks. I mean, explicit. Well, someone at planning or decided we should go out and layer in another layer of regulations on top of it. And we're not even, and we didn't have experts. I had dock builders calling. It says here I can only build this floating dock can only be four by four. He said, have you ever seen a, like a 75 <laughs> year old person try to stand on a four by four floating? I'm like, you know, so these kind of things, uh, I mean, it's just it's a that's just a very visual example of where we just the camera let the state regulate it. And it's not our water. It's the state's water. Well, I mean, it is all our water. But my point is, it's the states to regulate. We don't need to get out of our lane and go layer in another. Uh, think of that. That made it so much harder on and some of it's just nonsensical. But so I'll get back to your, to your question. Sure, about. Uh, let, let me just let me just point out that, that that's an example of me being a trained podcast host to bring out the best in my guests to correct the trained pot pro, trained podcast host when they bring up a non-republican idea so so that that's good thank you no, I, didn't, I didn't want it to come across as i was taking responsibility for creating one yeah, job exactly uh, yeah. so because that's i don't um uh it's the entrepreneurs it's the risk takers out there i mean i have i'm a small business person but i out of my job, I'm not. It's not local. So um, let's talk about financial conservatives. Do it. I will. I will tell you something that um, when I first started, it's small now. I don't even think anybody's noticed it. But when I first joined council, each you know, you'd have a line item on the on the agenda each week, and and it, it wouldn't. You know, a lot of people are not gonna if they even look at the agenda, they're not gonna dive any deeper. So I wanted and back then you you may recall 2011 was um oh gosh what was it called um it was a time of very high focus on finances and on spending and and I, I was right there with them and we would not it would it wouldn't have the dollar amount and it wouldn't tell where it came from so I I saw the when I went I was on CFPUA they had it on there. And I was like, why aren't we doing that? So that's something that they adopted because I wanted to, you know, we'd have people call me and said, y'all are spending $2 million on that. And I said, well, that's federal money. It's coming from the federal government. It's still your money, but it gets dis disseminated to cities. It's a flow through. It's a pass through. It's not your, you're not, I'm not, there's no property taxes. My point was, I want people to know. How much is being spent? I want it to be top line, not in the weeds. I don't want to know where it's come from because, you know, it's, it's one thing if we're having to buy a new fire truck or a new trash truck just out of cash. But if you're being responsible and you're setting aside money in a, you know, in a, over time, 
then that's the way I mean, then you're being very responsible and you know just because you're spending money doesn't mean it's a bad thing you know we need the fire trucks 20 years old we need a new one but right. if we didn't start planning for that 10 years ago then we're being dumb you know just so like our, just like our own checkbooks is that if you're going to make a purchase you open up the checkbook check the balance and and if the balance isn't there you either can't purchase it or you start planning to make that purchase that's right. that's what you're pushing for yeah that and 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 just questioning um you know when, when you look at something question the necessity i mean just last week it was a tiny thing but you know the, uh, it was a bill about uh, maybe cyber i think it was just some kind of cyber protection kind of deal we were s- signing a three year contract for and I'm sitting there reading the thing, and the invoice is fifty four thousand dollars, which is it was three years, the whole city. All, but on the on the the letter and on the resol on the or, on our uh, resolution ordinance, whatever it was, it was seventy four. And I'm just going, well, which is it? What's the number? And and then sure enough, get Tuesday night they pull it. That we need to go back and see what's going on there. And that's a in the scheme of the city, that's a tiny bit of money, but I just, I'll, I just want the answer. The answers, they usually give me a good answer. So it's not something that happens all the time, but I just like this to, to, um, to take a hard look at it. Uh, you can, you can also get corrected. I, I, I told this at the um, meeting uh, last Thursday night, but um, I, when I first got on council uh, or when I was first running for council, met with chief our police chief at the time ralph evangelis and i was kind of looking i knew like we to start what we or what we were talking beforehand about police uh, we were shorthanded a little bit at, in police we always are, are down a few but we were shorthanded and i was trying to where do we find more money and i was looking looking through these folks that we uh help support um, and there was thirty thousand dollars for Brigade Boys Club and thirty thousand rough numbers for the community boys club. I said, Hey, there's you know, we cobbled that together. We got two rookie police officers. And and he goes, No, I'll need ten. <laughs> he, he goes, he goes, No, that is money well spent. You're keeping kids active in the afternoon, help them with their homework in school. I mean, help them with their school, keeping them active. He said, that, that's, don't touch that money. Uh, so that's that's you, police officer training. It, it works both ways. I mean, sometimes yes. there's waste and sometimes there's smart use. And we've chosen them in, instead of trying to run like a lot of after school programs, like a lot of cities do to to just give a little piece to people that already do that and or have a passion for it and are usually in, the, in the nonprofits and have facilities, et cetera. That's just, that was the way before I got here, but we have tried to fine tune that process to make sure we're not giving um, you know, we like to see that we're not a hard, large percentage of their budget, you know, what, w- you know, how much, you know, we have, we like to see their, their financials, et cetera. It's, it's a whole scorecard, if you mm-hmm. will, determines how many people do they impact what's their effectiveness rate and all that's kind of come about since i've been on council i'm not going to take credit for that but i'll take credit as one of the people gripe making sure we're doing that right um that's what we're sending you for count to council for us so for, for you to to take a hard dive into those numbers to hit, take a hard dive into the policies because the, and i would say you know that to all my fellow candidates re- regardless of party it's this is not a party. Um, you you better be ready to commit your time, energy. Um, you want people on council they're they're going to be committed, dedicated to it, um, that are competent enough to. I mean, it, it's not all about one issue. Or there's no one issue. If you're a one issue candidate, then you you're gonna you're gonna hate being on council because <laughs> there's an array of issues that come at you. Some of them frankly, don't interest me as much as others, but I have to, I have to drill down and get, get into the weeds with those two. And, uh, and it's a four year term. So do, this is not something where you're going to jump in there and be done. Oh, okay. I don't like it. Uh, oh, I think I'm going to fail. So it's a, it's a commitment. And, um, so you better have the time, energy, dedication to it. And, um, 
be willing to, I don't know, it's just kind of looking at I just try to think of I put myself in the shoes of all these other citizens and try to think the way they're thinking. Um, I mean, it's impossible to be in everybody's shoes, but I try to put myself in their shoes. What, anytime they write me, call me. Uh, and, and cause I think sometimes, you know, you think you don't, you don't put a whole lot of, uh, you, you know, so much more than they do about what's going on that you, you just talk to them at too high a level and they're kind of like, did you even hear anything I had to say? So I just try to take a step back and go, Hey, let's, let's put myself in their shoes and try to start from a level where, uh, you know, like I did when, when I first started serving, I was learning, you know, a lot of stuff along the way. I mean, I knew a fair amount, but I'll have people call me and complain about parking downtown and charging. And I'm going, well, that is that you know that's uh, an account on its own. We don't use any taxpayer dollars for that, mm. it, so it's paid by the ratepayers. Uh, I mean, if you use it a lot, you pay a lot. If you use it very little, you use very little. So that way, you know, you, people that don't use it aren't paying for something. So it's we have and we have several like that. We have um, in the golf course. People say, oh, I don't want to pay for the golf. We we use the golf funds to pay for it. They run like little silos, little businesses. So, uh, you know, I didn't know that, you know, I, when I first started, until I started diving into it, who was they, you know, and I still get complaints about stuff like that. They, so it's um trash, you know, that's paid for again through your, through users. Needs. So, and I love that, you know, personally, I think that's another way that's Republican thinking again, you know, I don't think you just, it's a it's more use based instead of just you know divide it all up and just you know come up with a number. Neil Anderson is a Republican, and he is running along with two other Republicans, John Lennon and Catherine Bruner. Uh, early voting starts October nineteenth. That's not that far away. No, all we're time. not being the thick of it. We're I'm in the middle of you know we're planning all kinds of things with the help of the party. I think I've told you, um, uh, I don't want to repeat it, but just the organization, the party right now, the professionalism is just awesome. Uh, uh, Stephanie's volunteers, Rick si- Wilkins side of it. I mean, this, I've never dreamed I'd be doing this with the party. You just <laughs> mean, so it's come a long way. We have great candidates this time. I, I think I told people this Thursday night, and I don't mean to insult uh, uh anyone that's ever, I mean, just throwing yourself out there and running is a, is a big leap and it's, it takes a a lot of gumption to do, but this, this field of candidates, the three, the the two that are joining me is as strong as I've seen uh, top to bottom. Uh, And they offer some variety. I I don't think we've ever had a female Republican run that I can recall for city council that since I've been in the city. So it's, so it's exciting. And I hope uh, the whole, I hope, will turn out, you know, that, well, that's, that's what we need. That's what we need to isn't it? It's going to boil down to turnout and, and it, it always does. And at last four years ago, it rained all day long and it was a little bit chilly and I, it was just terrible turnout. And that's why, I, again, I keep going back to Thursday night, but I'm going to preach here. I can't preach to the preacher, I guess, but um, go vote early. I know it's a Republican uh, tradition. I'm the same way, to be honest. I like, kind of like voting on election day, but you just never know what's going to come up in your life on that day. Mm-hmm. If you, ha- you know, car breaks down, child sick, you're sick, something at work, you can't get away, and then you end up not voting. So it's a, you know, it's provided for us. Why not take advantage of it? it? I'm tired of uh, looking when the results come in for the early voting, you know, when they come up, they just whoosh, all download. And I'm in last place because all the Republicans <laughs> have to watch all night to try to, you know, pass. You know. So, um, you and know, that's what happened with our school board last time around is that uh, they, they, everything downloaded and all four of our BOE folks were in last place. They weren't there. And by the end of the night, we had had sent four conservative BOE. And that's what we're trying to do this time around. We want to send three conservative Republicans to the city council and and implement those Republican ideas here in Wilmington. So at the end, we would have a Wilmington City Council 
a BOE board of education and a city council and a, and a county government Early. that is run by Republicans. And you will see fantastic things happen here in New Hanover County and fantastic things see, uh, 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 here in, in, uh, in Wilmington. The website is votenealanderson.com. You're going to be out there door knocking and talking to people for the next, oh, you've got two months of hard, hard work ahead of you. What, sure do. What, what's the best way for people to get in touch with you? Well, uh, uh, my email is neilanderson at ec.rr.com if you want to shoot me an email. Um, if you'd be, if you're interested in contributing to the campaign, it, it, there's a, you can, uh, there's a, uh, way on my website, there's an icon to go through Antidote, which is a software company that makes sure that that your financials are, are safe and you can do that well. And, and you can also send a check. Uh, it takes money um, t- in a city our size. It, it used to maybe 20 years didn't take a whole lot of money. You knew a lot of enough people and a few yard signs would get it done. But to win now, you got to raise some money and I welcome that. Uh, but most importantly, you know, do what, you know, talk about the election to people, try to educate them a little bit on who's running, why they should vote for uh, the Republican candidates, um, learn, know enough about them to talk edu- you know, educatedly about it and, uh, and get that vote out um, uh, early and, and late all the way through. And uh, I think we, we can have some really um, appealing results at the end this time if we do that.